this video we're going to look at creating tables in Excel. So before we get started, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you've got some kind of uh, information here with the header row, data below, no blank rows. And I'll be using Excel 2013 in this lesson here. I can either select the whole group of data or just one of the cells. I go to the insert tab and click table. Alternatively, we can click control T. When that happens, Excel will recognize your data set. Uh, make sure you have the tables enabled and click OK. There's your table. Uh, a lot of people like to change the color of the table really easily like that to whatever you desire. Probably more importantly than the color is naming the table. In the upper left hand corner of the table tools design tab, we can name it. Type over top of the table one and press enter. My table is going to be called sales. All right, now using the reference uh, for the structure of the table, I'm going to start off with uh, calculating formula, adding up all the units sold within my sales table. So that will just be a regular old sum function equal sum. Okay, and I'll lead with my table name first. So table name is sales. And uh, once we type the name of the table, then the secret here is to type a left square bracket. That will populate my headers. And I just use my arrow key down to get to the correct field. That's the one I hit tab. Now I got to remember to, to uh, close off the right square bracket. And boom. So it just referenced units sold, and that will grow. That's a dynamic formula. If my rows add on to it, it will automatically populate. Hit enter, and uh, we've got 45 there. Awesome. Okay. Uh, while we're at it, let me go ahead and share with you some other things that were ha happening in that uh, structure there. So let's do it again. Equals. I'm just going to start off with uh, typing the name of my table tab sales square bracket so you've got opportunities to reference the entire table if you were to do the all so that's uh, pound all that'll reference the headers and the data sets we might want to use the data for example maybe um, in a D sum formula or V lookup sometimes you might just need to reference the data of the tables we have referencing just the headers in case you wanted to connect the header row for whatever reason you might be using a match formula to look to see where something might be located within a series of columns series of rows that I should say and if you ever use the at symbol that will represent the current row of wherever the position of the formula cell is. So it said some in row three outside the table is going to pick up on that row that I'm in. You'll see that at symbol when you're actually within the formula referencing itself in a formula cell. So those are the different ways to reference the table structure. Okay, so uh, how many how many store transactions are we looking at? So for do this, we're trying to pick up on all these stores here. We've got three here. So I'll use the count if formula. So equals count if. Start off with my range. I know it's going to come from my sales table. Square bracket so I can lead into the transaction type. So that's my range. Now comma to get to my criteria. And I'm going to type it in quotes. Store quotes. That would do it. Hit enter. Three. Awesome. Okay, now let's uh, see how many units were sold for online transactions. Yep. Okay, so that would be the sum if equal sum if my range again sales table square bracket arrow key down and I'm looking for the transaction type square bracket comma criteria will be this time we're looking for online so I'm including online in quotes 
and then I need my sum range, which will be sales table again, square bracket, unit sold, square bracket, close off the parentheses, hitting enter, 23. Awesome. Next one. Uh, total units sold in February for online transactions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and create a month field. And uh, what's cool about tables is if you need to add on to your table account, the columns will automatically adjust. I'll start in the middle of my table and do the month formula. This will just return 1 through 12. And I'm using the month formula. All it needs is a serial number. Just click on the date of the current row. You see how we see that at symbol there referencing the current date. That's going to pick up the formula all the way up and down in my table. And there we have it. So the answer in that case was a 1 because it came off and it picked up on these. Uh, these are a bunch of January cells here. The next we see 2s coming up on the February cells. So I'm trying to find how many 2s were located in the month column. And we're adding up uh, total units sold. And also it needs to be online transactions. So this will be the sum ifs, plural, equals sum ifs. Now the difference between sum ifs and sum if is you start with, when you use the plural, you start with the sum range right off the bat. So I'll go ahead and I know my table name is sales, square bracket, and you can see how it picked up on the month already. Just added that. Okay, so I'll start with, oh, I needed to, actually I need to add up, wrong one, the sum range first. So it's going to be the units sold, of course. There we go. That's my sum range. Okay, good. Now I'm going to need to have the criteria range equal sales for a month. And since we're just counting up numbers, just need a two. It does not need to go around parent or quotation marks. Hitting up the criteria range two, which would be sales square bracket transaction type. comma, looking for online. Okay, let's hit enter. And we see seven. Okay, that looks about right there. There's the two of all the transactions here too. These two are February. There's the two online. It's picking up one plus seven. Boom. It's getting that in there right there perfectly. Awesome. Um, let's say if we added a new row, will it pick up on our formula? So I'm going to do a transaction for February 15, 2015. Okay, I'm going to do 100 units sold, and I'll make sure I hit hit up the online. Yes, indeed. So it picked it up there beautifully in that formula as well as that formula is now up to date here. Okay, last thing I want to share with you is how to do a total row in a table. You can go to the Table Tools Design tab and check the total row. You can also do Control Shift T. What happens there is it will automatically give you a total row. This is a formula field that adds up basically in the footer of the table a column here. So I could uh, actually choose and it's trying to do the sum that doesn't make any sense there I'll do a um, none since that's just a, a month total there however we would like to do the uh, unit sold so I'm clicking on total row clicking the drop down you can do a sum you can see um, how that's mapping up to our first answer there I could do an average I could do max see the highest value min see the lowest value there as well I'll start with the sum Awesome. So there you have it, guys. Uh, how to work with tables and then reference tables using the table structure style, followed with the square brackets when you're picking up the field name. Thanks for watching.